Welcome everybody, you're watching Mr. Bugu Data Science. Today, I would like to discuss something I feel is educational and beneficial for everyone. I stumbled onto a text-to-video generation tool one or two days ago. The name is Minimax AI from China. Sign up is easy with just a phone number or a scan of a WeChat barcode. You have unlimited uses to practice and have fun. Videos are currently 1280 by 720 pixels, generating 25 frames per second with 6 second video link. I will leave a link in the description below for you to check it out, but free doesn't mean free. There's always a catch. Something told me to review the terms and conditions. Because of this, I wanted to compare a few other popular tools and see how their terms and conditions regarding output and commercial usage. Also, how do these places handle your data? Sorry to meet you in this circumstance, but human resources would like you to know that as a disclaimer, I'm not an attorney and I am not providing legal advice or interpretation. Seek legal counsel if you are unsure. Everything I say is my interpretation and opinion. Now, let's get to the video. Here is the website for Minimax AI. I think this may be the Chinese translation for the name itself, but I'm unsure. Zooming out, we will see two green boxes at the bottom of the screen. The left box, I think, is a music generator, and the right box is our text-to-video tool. Click that box and it opens a black screen for you to read and accept the terms. But for us, we want to click the center portion to the left of the green button that says sure. This will open the terms of service page. At this point, I will scroll down to the second section for the first important part. That will be how our output from a prompt is treated. Trying to find out also who has the ownership or are there any restrictions on the use of this content. As we can see, the output is not permitted for commercial use as of September 6, 2024. This may change in the future because this is a free tier. Next, how are the identification parameters of users handled? Now we will review how user data and personal information are stored. First, you can see that the prompts and output for videos will be stored and used for future testing of their AI model. Also, they will not publish, edit, or disclose your personal information and non-public content you have stored in their system without your authorization. That seems pretty fair. An interesting point is this third bulletin right here. The data that they use for training is anonymized, which means they're not using your identification by any means while they're testing this data. Here's a few examples from the community to get us inspired. I'm headed to the bottom of the bottle. I've been drowning, I've been floating away. Every other dollar that I got in bed, I probably went and to the way. I'd f***ing okay. I ain't liking it, babe. I don't even want to talk. I'm just smoking my haze. I've been stuck in my ways. I've been stuck in for days. What's the takeaway from this? The user data from Minimax is not a major concern. The one consideration that gives me reservations from using this product is the fact that I cannot use it for commercial purposes and I'm only helping them train their model. So for me currently, it's not useful, but I can say that some of the generations I've seen online are stunning. I think it's a good product. I just want it for commercial use. Let's move on and look at a few other resources such as Ideogram and Hotshot AI. Ideogram is an AI tool for text to image, best known for text adherence, which is difficult in other platforms to achieve. We can view the pricing before moving on to the paperwork of terms of service and data privacy. According to terms of service, section two, you can use output for commercial use and it is not specified between a free or a paid tier, which is nice. About privacy, we need to look at separate documents. Let me open that. Your data is held for an unspecified amount of time and may be transferred to a country outside of your own. Aside from this, they support consumer privacy acts that have been passed in states such as California and Colorado, where you have extra provisions to protect you. Here's a list below. Feel free to pause the video and if you live in one of these states, this may help you. In the past 12 months, they have not sold or shared any user data. And from what I understand, there's a separate provision that also deals with data for minors, if I understood this correctly. Now we have Hotshot.co or Hotshot AI, which is a service providing text to video. They have a free tier. You can create three prompts per day and use for commercial purposes. Stick to the free one. Here's some showcased examples on their main page. Let's get to the terms and conditions, terms of service and privacy. The terms of service are pretty straightforward. You get commercial usage of your uh, creations. 
you could stop the video right here and look at this. You have the right to use all of it. Privacy portion, on the other hand, is a little bit iffy. You're going to read this and feel free to give me your opinion. Basically, as soon as you log in the first time, they start taking as much data as possible, such as your Google image, any real information related to your browser, facial recognition, if you give them permission. They'll take your contacts if you decide to tag or find somebody. They'll ask for permission for that as well. I don't see any anything regarding the sale or sharing of any of your personal details. If you have any reluctancy, just look into their company to see if there's anything in there. Now we have Bling AI, a service out of China that opened its doors to users from outside the country. You have the ability to create image to video. Coming soon, the ability to also edit those videos. Spend a few seconds and look on the screen. Some of these videos are very nice. A few things I wanna mention. We can evaluate the pricing structure on a Reddit post after we go through this payment policy section. This is where I found the output guidelines from your generations. In the documentation, we can see that you do have commercial rights to your output. The free versions, you're going to have a watermark. If you want to remix, redistribute, modify, or any other thing, you can do it as well. It's set out clearly, that's a positive. But aside from this, privacy policy is something else. I'm going to show this to you. You're going to have to stop the video and look at all this because there's a lot going on. I feel this website is the most transparent on what they're using your information for. Unfortunately, reading through this is dense and they take a lot of your personal information. Anything that's going on, they're going to try to scrape it. Doesn't matter if it's what kind of computer you use, what the specs of your computer, your name, your information, your cookies, your browsing, blah, blah, blah. They're going to take it. Read through this, stop the video, or go on the website at your own leisure. Point of this exercise was to show that just because something's free doesn't mean it's really free. Or when you sign up for these services, what are they doing with your information? Are they training your generations for their model? Are you able to make your generations private or is it only for the public? Can you use it for commercial use? These are things that you should be asking yourself before blindly watching people on YouTube and just taking this at face value. Also, look at the subscriptions. The subscriptions are a big deal. Some of these places, you know, I'm not sure how I feel ethically about it, but be, be careful with the subscriptions for these places if you want to get rid of them. Make sure you do it in a timely matter because a lot of them will not give you a refund. So just be aware of that. This is my public service announcement because I don't like feeling what I'm getting burned and I don't think other people's do either. This will be the conclusion of the video. I hope it was useful and brought some utility. Feel free to hit that like button and it and consider subscribing. And if you subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Shameless plug. I have a buy me a coffee or you could show support through a membership or super thanks. Sorry, but I got to do it. it. Takes a long time to make these videos. They're not the best, but I try. Next time we'll be investigating the second part for the last web scraping video I did featuring tips to help you close any leaks that occur when you're web scraping. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Run free.